people still coming in. Um, so this this is the second version that we've done with Fai. Um, the last one was really, really telling. We had extremely good feedback um, and everyone found it really, really worthwhile. So hopefully um, you guys get a lot from it. We have got a couple of bits of information. So we have got our community um, that's set up on our LinkedIn page that we've got a couple of hundred people now um, joined us. We've got people asking questions and interactive. So if you're not on there, there is a link on our chat, which is the bottom right hand page. It's a little speech bubble. For those of you that aren't a member of our community on LinkedIn, please feel free, give us a click and just um, request to be part of it. it is, we've got all of our events, events on there. We've got run through details of future events. Now, throughout September, for those of you that aren't aware, we have got bid September sessions. Now, our first host is being announced this afternoon. So keep an eye out for that. For those of you that aren't sure of what that is or haven't heard of Bid September Sessions, they're basically interviews with some leading, very well-known and very well-educated um, individuals. So we're going to be asking them questions about how they cope within Bid World, in the Bid World, what they do, facts and figures, hints and tips on ways of coping and diversifying your team and the process that you use um, to win work, really. So keep an eye out for that later this afternoon, but we will be updating um, our community page and posting information on there. So I'm going to pass over to Faye, um, who's going to run you through the details. Faye, I'll get the presentation up for you. Thank you, Rack. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'll just wait till the presentation comes up on screen so you can all see it. Um, and if I could just ask if people haven't already, if you could mute your microphones. Um, we can take questions throughout the presentation, but it sometimes helps to leave these things to the end. So um, don't be shy. Feel free to chip in as we go. Um, as Raquel mentioned, this is the second time of presenting this um, this presentation. We had good attendance last time and it was a really good interactive session. Um, it's all about how we integrate bid and design teams. Um, before I get into the detail, though, a little bit about myself. So uh, my name is Faye. And um, Raquel, if you could just show the slides. Yeah, there we go. So my name's Faye. Um, I'm the director and founder of a company called Bid Pro Solutions. Um, Bid Pro's had the pleasure of working with Hobbs on some strategic in the past. Um, I've got about 17 years experience to count uh, recent. Yeah, I think 17 years. Um, of bidding, um, you know, it's something that I've really enjoyed doing, and um, I often work with very large, multidiscipline, multicultural teams, um, often in many industries and on different scales of bids, some smaller ones through to the sort of mega bids. Um, and what that does, obviously, is um, allow you to engage with lots of different people in different ways and see how different folks, um, how they bid, the processes they use, and how they integrate design into their various different processes. So I'll share some of my insight into that as part of the presentation. Um, as a bid manager, I'm very, very passionate about how we work with our team and our, our partners to, to, to collaborate and co-create. And it really is, um, you know, those magical bids are those ones where everybody sort of respects the roles that we're all there to play and uh, listens and communicates with their peers to really just drive the value you know it's all about playing to our strengths which obviously does include working with our designers and how we bring them into the fold from the start of the process um okay so for those of you who may be aware we haven't run the polls uh, next slide please raquel we haven't run um updated polls since the last time um the data that we got back from those was um insightful we ran some polls looking at how um folk use graphics on their bids and we'll go into that in a little bit of detail throughout the presentation we'll then touch on the importance of graphics in bids uh, how we drive the team integration, so how we bring the designers into the fold, as I mentioned from the off. And then finally, we'll we'll just summarise with how we link the bid programme, the design process. Um, so I'll really be sharing my insights from a bid manager's viewpoint rather than a design viewpoint. And hopefully by the end of the session, you'll have some um, tips to help better integrate design into the process, enabling your bid teams to constructively collaborate more importantly and work more closely going forward. Okay, next slide, please, Raquel. So um, just 
starting with looking at the polls that we ran uh, two, three weeks ago now, and we ran three questions with the first one being, do you tend to work on bids um, using Word, InDesign or both? And as you can see from the results, there seems to be a good even spread of both use of InDesign and, and Word. Obviously, both serve a purpose depending on the bid, the scale of the bid, the size of the bid, what you're required to submit. Um, so it is very much bid dependent. Um, but just it for the purpose of what we're doing today, when we think about this from a bid management perspective, always just from the off, be mindful of those design requirements from the start, um, because obviously that uh, impacts the way that you run your process and in turn impacts the way that you present your final submission to the end client. So always think about the design requirements, depending on which methods that you're choosing. Next slide, please, Raquel. OK, so the second question that we asked was around um, when working on a bid, what's more important, graphic design or written content? And surprisingly or unsurprisingly, um, most people believe written content to be the most important. Um, in my opinion, I think they're actually both equally as important um, because they both serve a purpose, again, depending on the bid, depending on the end client, etc. But just as words can't really be turned into pictures, pictures can't easily replace words. Um, and so in that respect, both have, have a place on a bid in terms of their unique ability to convey information in a clear and unambiguous way. So it's also worth, you know, being mindful as humans. I often say, you know, we're not supposed to, but we do judge a book by its cover and we do eat with our eyes. So it's always good to have you know, a well presented bid that encourages the evaluation board to want to pick up your submission first, you know, when they've got a, a suite of bid being presented to them, you really want to set the bar and the tone by them choosing yours first, because that, you know, psychologically starts, uh, starts them off with a good impression of what's to come. Um, as humans, we don't do very well with large amounts of text. You know, we have so much information thrown at us these days that if we can throw in some pictorial uh, representation of the information we're trying to convey, it's always good to have a good balance of um, of graphics within our submission. And similarly, you know, reading time, being mindful of the evaluation team again, they have lots to evaluate. They have lots of information to process. So the reading time can be quite overwhelming. So if you can think about just making sure you've got that good split between graphics and written content, it's always a good show. Um, similarly, you know, good written content, yes, is absolutely imperative. It's all, all very important to get those top scores when you're looking at your marks. But similarly, good graphical representation is also important. You know, it promotes quality and professionalism. Um, it helps to convey those important messages, particularly when you've got page and word count, count limitations. So always give that some thought. Um, and finally, just, just to really reiterate the point, I think when you when you look at some marketing campaigns, those that are, are you know, most success, successful, excuse me, um, they tend to use a good combination, a good balance of written word and, and graphical representation. So Spotify, for example, recently they've launched a campaign where they're combining a lot of um, information using using memes and things like that. So, uh, you know, that that form of conveying the information in the way that it's going to stick. Um, just give that some thought when you're devising your bid and win strategy. Next slide, please, Raquel. And then the final question that we asked people was, what proportion of your budget do you allocate to graphic design? Um, and 67% um, claim that they spend over five, uh, spend just less than 5%, with 33% spending over 15%. Um, so, yeah, quite an interesting result, that one. I mean, ideally, from my experience, when putting your bid budgets together, you want to be targeting less than 10% of your overall budget towards graphic design. Um, anything greater than 15%, I would advise that you consider why. You know, are you are you using a lot of um, design time that becomes abortive work down the line or um, not necessarily, you know, nailed your process? But then similarly, for some mega bids, you might be wanting to spend over 15 percent because, again, it's about conveying that professionalism and the quality output. But um, general rule of thumb, less than 10 percent is kind of where you want to target. We do have um, some other sessions that we're looking at rolling out in, in the future where we'll be giving you some good tips and tricks in terms of covering, you know, bid budgets in, in greater detail. So watch this space. And next next slide, please, Raquel. Okay, um, 
so I'm not going to read all of these uh, points on here. You can obviously all see that for yourselves. But this is really just to convey how important it is to integrate graphics within your bid submission. And there's some key stats here that really resonated with me that I think, you know, it's worth considering when you're putting your design team together and your bid team together. So generally, um, you know, using graphics increases your win rate by about 43 percent various sources that we've used to provide this information which we we can make available after the call but yeah on average 43 percent success rate is a, an increase as a result of using good graphics um when putting your program together just just be mindful depending on the the graphic medium that you're looking to use that it takes on average between 15 and 25 minutes to manually design a single page. I think that's more so when you're working it in design. But again, just be mindful of the time pressure that your design team sometimes face. You know, don't leave it all to the end of the process to expect them to churn out amazing graphics. Really bring them in early doors to just give some consideration and, re and respect the process. You know, it is a creative pro pro process. It takes time to think through, you know, what you want to convey, how best to convey it. Um, generally, you're working to about 5,500 words for a single space page. So obviously, when writing, thinking about that poll question, what's more important, written content versus graphical representation? If you've got 500 words and you're wanting to bring in some graphics, then, you know, make sure that you're allowing some space, some su su sufficient space uh, in your written response to accommodate that. And uh, Generally, you know, general rule of thumb is 25% of your overall bid. If you can get graphics um, to represent 25%, then that's typically considered good coverage. So why might we use graphics in our bid? Well, obviously, you know, it improves the value of your proposal. It sets the bar in terms of quality and professionalism. It certainly helps to communicate your objectives and your value proposition faster and easier than words, words can alone. Um, and also worth mind, you know, being mindful of the fact that as humans, we process images in a different way to text. So back to the evaluation again, think about how the evaluate, evaluators are going to be um, churning through all this information within the various different bids and how a breakup of written form and, and graphical representation can help them to evaluate the submission. The value of persuasion, don't underestimate how a good graphic can help to persuade the evaluators to just tip the scoring. If they're going for a three or a four, a good graphic might encourage them to go to a four, you know, something like that. So they will they will eat with their eyes and they will judge your proposal by the quality of your branding in your graphics that you've put in and um, it helps to offer a consistent reading experience so you know just going back to that point again about how as humans we process written content and graphics you might want to um, when setting your bid strategy think about when and how you're going to use the graphics within your bid so if you've got particularly complex content you know technical submissions that you're looking to put forward then good graphics can really help a non uh, evaluator to just understand what it is you're trying to demonstrate um could be really good to help convey what what is a good um, product or service that you're offering to your end client and it can really just help to enhance all of the content the ideas the claims that you're making throughout your proposal so thinking back to sort of tone of voice and messaging and all of that kind of stuff graphics can really help you convey that um worth noting as well though poor graphics can be quite damaging so really give some thought about how you're going to put these graphics into your bid think about the time you need to develop them think about the skill sets you need within your team allow some time within your review programs to really look at graphics you know the amount of bids that i've seen where you've got the you know the rogue spelling mistake it stands out like a sore thumb at the end so you know really think about that and don't just use to fill up white space the evaluators can see straight through that make them relevant always ensure that you include action captions and a good explanation within your written content about the graphics that you're putting forward always check the quality and the resolution again communicate with your designers determine what space you've got for your graphics determine the space they've got to fit in you know um the information that you need because um so often you see folk you know when you're trying to cram everything on your page at the final hours and you're making your graphics a lot smaller and then you just lose the quality and you can't get and things like that so check the quality check the resolution and as i've mentioned make sure you introduce your graphics and that what you put in really relates to the text that you're writing about. 
Um, another thing to just think about in terms of tips to perhaps take away from today's session is to think about, you know, look at your clients, look at the end client. What kind of branding, colors, themes do they tend to go with? Could you convey some alignment within the graphics that you produce to, to just really demonstrate to the client that you've done your homework and you're really keen to work with them and, and just sort of reinforce that partnership approach that you're trying to sell as part of your proposal um, decide on the types of graphics that you're going to require that's really important and listen and work with your designers early on to sort of set the stall and work out what you're going to do okay next slide please Raquel okay um so when we look at team integration and how we get get a good team that's really working well together and performing in the way they should um always you know as it should be mindful of you of your audience and your stakeholders so there's you know we've simplified this here but when you look at some of the key stakeholders involved in a bid you've got your senior stakeholders involved in governance of the proposal you know they're signing off what you're submitting they're approving the bid for submission you've got the bid manager who's ultimately sort of navigating the ship and working with all of the team to get the submission to to where it needs to be you know compliant compelling and ready to be submitted on time bid writers equally very important in terms of just making sure that you're communicating information in a really compelling and and, and positive way subject matter experts working often with graphic designers with bid writers to really just get that technical content within your submission so we can really show that we know what we're talking about and then equally the graphic designer is as important as everybody within that that team there um you know so many times i see graphic design teams being brought in at the very last stage expected to produce all these wonderful graphics and like, frankly you, you're setting yourselves up to fail you know if you can just bring in your graphic designers early doors they don't have to be there full time throughout the process but certainly just make sure that you're bringing them in at key stages throughout your program uh, it really does help to drive a quality proposal so um, it's all about for me as a bid manager really constructively collaborating and communicating effectively across the piece um, in terms of key tips i think things that you can do to help drive team integration is sit down with your design team early doors to just establish the templates that you might be using the processes that you're going to deploy um, consider key key elements such as the typefaces you might want to use the font size the colors you know pagination requirements um, page count word count all that stuff um, check in on your team regularly you know as bid manager that's your role you're there to really support your team and make sure that everybody's happy and playing to their strengths the information's flowing in the way it should so always check in on your team members regularly if you've got any blockers find out why you know help resolve them and um, just listen and support your team as you need to Perhaps if you're bringing a design team in, a professional design team, you know, outsourcing the role and you're bringing them in for the first time, there might be an idea to just get your designers in early doors to explain the design process, particularly if you're not used to working in, in design, for example, get them to just talk you through how it works, how that's going to convey to the, you know, to the writing team and, and vice versa. So make sure everybody becomes aware of the process, the interfaces, the time impact as a result of the design elements that you're using. And it's really important that you get a design process implemented that everybody's on board with, you know, so it's not becoming one of these bottlenecks at the final hours, that really, really people sign on to the process early doors. And, you know, if partway through the process it's not working, it's fine. Just don't be afraid to tweak it. Make, make sure you call out the issues early doors. Don't let them all sort of feed through to the end. So um, another thing you might want to do as well in terms of driving that team integration is get your graphic designers into key meetings. I don't need to attend every bid team meeting, but certainly some of the key ones, you know, capture plan kickoffs, um, capture planning, sorry, kickoff meetings storyboarding sessions answer planning sessions you know there might be an, an element of getting your designers in the room to just say we've, we've got to answer this question we've got to write about this but we might want a little infographic to explain that could you give us some advice how that might work what might that look like how much space might that take up um similarly for solutioning you know if you're designing a solution if you've got past the sort of pqq phase and you're really thinking about the solution you're offering to your end client get your graphic team into into some of those key meetings because 
you know, they might really help you to communicate your design and your solution to the wider team members so that everybody really understands what it is that you're offering the end client. Um, and then when you run, you know, toward the end of the bid, it's very common um, to run, you know, daily check-ins, stand-ups, leaderboards, whatever you call them. Get your designers input in those just for a quick sort of 10, 15 minute run through every day. Where you at? What are you doing? Have you got all the information you need? If you haven't, why not? What can we do to help? Um, and it just helps with that communication piece as well. OK, and um, just moving on now to the final slide. So this is a very simplified um, version of the programme. You know, those who've been involved in, in bids will know that there's a whole whole melange of stuff that's required to get a bid over the line. But, um, you know, from capture planning all the way through to post bid, um, there's a requirement for designers to be involved. So as you're putting your programme together and you're looking at all your key milestones within the programme, really think about the role of the designer as part of that. So, you know, as bid manager, ask the design questions when developing the programme. Where are they going to feed in? And as a result of that, consider the design time that you're going to allocate for that particular stage of the process, as well as the design time, what are the interfaces, the stakeholders that we might need to bring into the fold? Are there any complexities we need to work through? And similarly, what are the efficiencies that that's going to drive by bringing your designers in earlier? You know, you might, as a result, reduce the amount of abortive graphics that you're producing, or you may, you may produce, um, you know, more compelling graphics as a result because you're really able to sort of finesse and tweak and read those graphics to to communicate what you need them to by bringing your designers in early on and um, think about programming the design time per page based on that previous slide at the start that we talked about that we're saying you have 15 25 minutes on average to design a single page so you know think about that the proportion of design time required potentially against the scoring criteria? Would you really want to be spending the bulk of your design time on a response that's only going to score you 0.5% of the overall mark, for example? So think about that when you're putting your program together. We've talked about obviously checking in with your team regularly, just making sure through each step of the, the journey that everyone's comfortable, they know what they're there to do, people are delivering what they're supposed to, they're really playing to their strengths. So again, that's back to communication as well, just really communicating the design requirements early doors, checking that your design team understands what it is that you're asking for, and vice versa, that you know that the designers understand what's being written about, that they can then convey it into, into a good graphic. Um, some little tips and tricks as well just to end really i think um there's you know throughout the pandemic we've all been used to working in various different platforms whether it's a google meet or a zoom or a teams environment great tools for promoting collaboration within your team and 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 microsoft teams in particular i'm a fan of because you can create you know a graphics channel where your graphic designers can share the information they're providing that everybody can see and it then might prompt somebody else within the team to go oh actually that graphic that might really work on the response i'm working on and then you all come together and you talk it through so collaborative platforms really help uh, to promote visibility you know tough ideas and um, you know collaborate as we need to a graphics log is always a great idea so this is just so people know you know the volume of graphics that we're managing as part of the bid how many do we need what size do they need to be what format do they need to come in you know run a graphics log that your designers can work from so they really understand what their workflow is looking at and that they can program the time in and the resource in that they need to, to do the job justice. Um, when you do storyboarding and your answer planning, don't just think about the written form, think about the graphical representation as well. So capture that within the storyboard for each question. Again, that can help you to manage time, resource, all of that kind of stuff. And then um, if folks, you know, if you use, um, I use solution sprints quite often when I'm working on the bigger bids, and that's really useful in terms of, you know, developing your solution with the key stakeholders um, as part of the, the, the programme. And if you use the solution sprints, but in, invite some of your graphics um, folk into those calls, they can really help you to come up with some, you know, some good ideas that you can communicate easily to the rest of the team. So it can really just help with that, you know, that co-creation and that that thought process. And similarly, you know, if you're trying to sell um, a solution to your senior stakeholders, you know, before you submit your bid, some they're not going to sit and read through as many questions as you've written to just understand what it is we're bidding. 
they want to know straight away right what you know headline bullet points what is it and a graphic can help do that so you could get a nice sort of infographic that just has everything they need to go out okay that's our solution it's going to cost us this i get it leave the writers to go away and write about it in the way they need to so graphics can really help there um i think that's about it from me i'm not sure how we're doing on time but um come to about one o'clock five to one so if anybody's got any questions happy to take them now or i'm sure if they drop raquel a line or dave we can answer them offline either way thanks Faye. that was really really good um so i was making notes all the way through that and i always think it's amazing when i listen to you and you kind of present there's so many things that you can do not only in the um bid world but you can take into every kind of project regardless if it's a bid if it's um, a project that you're doing with marketing or anything like that it's really adaptable isn't it and it's versatile yeah. as well which is i think it's incredible so we've launched a poll just to get some feedback um, so you're going to see in the bottom right hand corner, you've got a triangle, a square and a circle. If you can click on that for me, it should have a little blue pointer with polls. And it's just to just to ask, did you find today's session useful? Straightforward, yes or no. We haven't given you lots of. So we'll be kind, hopefully. Um, we, we do have time for a little question and answers. Has anyone got any questions or or comments that they would like to offer? We have got the chat for those of you that aren't happy to raise a hand. Um, so feel free to ask away while we've got Faye with us. Don't be shy, Faye. <laughs> I think silence is golden sometimes, Faye. <laughs> it means you've covered everything. So thank you once again for joining us. As I said, we have got our first host of um, bid summer sessions for throughout the month of September. It's going to be announced later this afternoon. We have got a community on LinkedIn that is involved in the chat here we have got the uh, link for you get involved ask some questions let us know any feedback or hints and tips that you may have that we can share to our community but thanks again and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day hopefully we'll see you all soon thanks Raquel thank you everybody